Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Ridgeview Church. My name is Alex Barrett, and I'm the lead pastor, and we are so glad that you've decided to join us this morning. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. I wanted to commend you. You have made what I believe is the wisest choice. You've decided to tune in to a church service, to dig into God's Word, to to worship God uh, through singing, and that is one of the best choices that you could make. And so I commend you, and I hope that this next hour that we spend together will be an encouragement to you. Uh, Last week, I started a new series called Setting the Tone. And how do we set the tone for our lives? By focusing and thinking about the right things. And certainly some of setting the tone uh, last week was actually reflecting and looking back on the last year. And I hope as you did that, if you tuned in last week, uh, that that was an encouragement to you. If you've not yet had a chance uh, to listen to our message, you can check out our podcast, Ridgeview Church. Uh, Fontana. You can also check out our YouTube page and our watch page for the archive there. But we took the time to look back and praise God at all the things that he's done. That is certainly a crucial aspect of setting the tone, always looking back and remembering God's faithfulness. When you remember God's faithfulness, it actually gives you what you need to face the present and then to face the future. And so take some time, if you haven't yet, to just remember all the ways that God has helped you this past week and then this past week year. So today we're continuing in setting the tone, but now we are looking forward. And there's no better place to do that than the beginning of January. How do we look forward to this year in a way that will set us up to make the most, again, of the opportunities that God brings? And so I want to start with just some really exciting news uh, for us as a church. And that is, as this new year, 2021, Ridgeview Church is now a standalone church. And that is so worthy of celebration. And so I just clap here, and I hope at home you can just cheer and say, wow, God is so good. Uh, We were blessed to have a sponsoring church, Church in the Valley in Ontario. Uh, That was a church where I was trained for many years. My wife and I were trained in the ministry, and I was on staff as a pastor uh, for 12 years as well. And they sponsored us and supported us and sent a team out for us to get started. And we have been legally under them uh, for the last two years, but we were recently incorporated and we are now a stand-alone church. And so it's kind of this leaving of the nest, an opportunity for us to grow up and to grow in new ways. And so as we look forward, one of the key aspects that we can really be encouraged in and challenged by and lean into is the fact that we are now a church that has the opportunity to stand on our own two feet. And I just wanted to thank all of you for the ways that you have pulled in uh, to Ridgeview so that we can get to this point. Uh, Financially, we have support from so many people, so many of you who really are giving uh, of your resources to help Ridgeview Church. And so I just wanna encourage you to continue to give, to ask God to stretch your faith to give as we begin this new journey as a standalone church. And as this happens, what, what begins to happen is we begin to kind of take more and more ownership As we get less and less support, because we're still actually getting support from some other churches and some other individuals that are not a part of Ridgeview, but as time goes on, that actually fades, because that's right. Again, we need to stand on our own two feet. So as we look forward to this year, part of what we're going to see as a church is a unique opportunity we have to really own our community, to really invest and give ourselves and really put all of our skin into the game. And I can't wait to see what God does. And so as we look forward, I wanted to start with that exciting news. We are now an independent standalone church. And I can't wait to see how God continues to lead us forward, to bless us, to give us new opportunities, to trust Him in new ways. I can't wait to see what He does. So as you're exploring Ridgeview, you may be in multiple places on the spectrum. You may be new to Ridgeview and you're kind of putting your toe in the water and just trying to figure out who we are and what we're about. I encourage you, take your time to do that. Uh, We do not want to pressure you. We don't want to guilt you or shame you. We we want to welcome you here. Get to know us. Join us at the different events we have. Continue to, to join us online. Pull in. Continue to experience the community that God's put together here. For some of you, you're you're members of Ridgeview. You've decided, I want to be committed. And that's what the membership process is. For those of you who are committed Christians, you're followers of Christ, we invite you to explore membership. And if you're not yet a member, uh, let us know on your connection uh, your connection card. It's called uh, 
exploring Ridgeview, and we want to help you take the steps towards membership. And membership is just a thing that I'm committed to this church. This is the place that I want to commit to, to this group of people to make uh, this church go. And so for some of you, it may be, I need to kind of take that step towards membership. For others of you, you're members and it's just a new opportunity for you to trust God as God will continue to give you more opportunity and more responsibility uh, within the church. And so again, no matter where you are, whether you're exploring, you're maybe taking steps forward, you maybe been a part of Ridgie for a long time, this is the greatest season to be a part because God is doing something new. He's bringing water to the dry land. He's bringing refreshment to people who so desperately need it. And that is our mission statement. We want to invite people to experience the refreshing life in Christ. So as we look forward this year, I'm so excited to see who God is bringing around, who he will bring around that we haven't even met yet. We have such an opportunity to build a community that makes a difference in the lives of people all around our cities. So I wanna spend some time talking today. Since we are now a standalone church, we're on our own two feet, we now have the responsibility to really bear and say, God, we are this church, we wanna honor you, we wanna proclaim your name, how do we do that? Well, to be a church that actually makes a difference, you have to have a healthy biblical community. For any of us to function, you have to have a place of health. That's certainly true in our physical lives, it's true in our emotional lives, it's also true in, in our spiritual lives. If, if we wanna make an impact, we, we have to be healthy. And so if you wanna be physical healthy, you gotta look at you know, your, your diet and your exercise. And this time of year, a lot of us are a little bit more in tune. Okay, how do I maybe get rid of some of those choices I made in 2020 to now make better choices physically? And then emotionally, what are some ways that we, we need to do that? Maybe we're working too much and there's too much pressure. Or maybe we're just focusing on things that aren't true and that's impacting uh, our lives. And then spiritually, maybe we've drifted, right? Like we've just gotten so busy with life that we've not taken time to maybe spend time with the Lord in, in prayer and prayer and reading of his word. And we're just running around. And all of these things can actually really degrade our lives. And in a church, it's the same. We can be so busy, sometimes focusing on the wrong things, or we can be so busy focusing on ourselves that, that we fail to see, well, how do we build this healthy community? So as we look forward, to 2021, what God's laid on my heart is the need and the focus and the urgency for we need to continue to build a healthy community. And that involves two things. The first is we need to wisely organize and govern ourselves. That means that we need to actually choose the best way for us to structure, for us to meet needs, for us to organize and lead out to create leaders and teams and structures so that ministry can happen. So in any healthy biblical community, there is an organization that exists. There's a structure. And we wanna make sure that we have a structure that's gonna accomplish the purposes that please God. Many times we can just move forward without thinking or we move forward without planning, we move forward without organizing and we tend to get the result of that. But for us to be a healthy biblical community that pleases God, that makes a difference in the world, we need to organize and we need to govern correctly. And that's been part of what this whole process of us becoming a standalone. How do we create this structure in wisdom so that what we produce is pleasing to the Lord? It makes him happy. What we produce makes an impact and helps people and, and blesses them. So there's an intentionality that the organization needs to have. And what is as important, and maybe we even feel even more, is the second, is that we need to commit to healthy personal relationships. This is the organism part of the church, the organic things, the, the web of relationships. Yes, we need wisdom to organize effectively, but if we have wisdom and a wise organization, but we don't have healthy personal relationships, we may have a great structure, but we won't have the people to actually support it. We won't have the people who want to be a part of it because all of us want healthy personal relationships. Isn't that true? We don't want relationships where we're, we're guilted or shamed. We don't want relationships where we're manipulated. We don't want relationships where somebody says something and then they don't do it. We don't want relationships where bitterness and frustration are the norm. We don't want relationships where we hold grudges. We don't want relationships where we don't really talk about what's going on. 
right? All of those, none of us would say like, we want those. But as I've just described that, doesn't that kind of describe most relationships? It's so easy for those to happen. So for a church to be healthy, biblical community, you can't just go with the flow of culture. You can't even just go with the flow of what you want. You have to purposely and intentionally and with all the effort and strength that you get from the Lord, you have to organize and then you have to build the right healthy personal relationships that can exist so the two can come together to really make a difference. So I want to talk through the way that that can happen. As we're a standalone church, God wants us to be this healthy biblical community. Well, I want to describe what the scriptures say about this to kind of just give a picture and then lay out the keys for this to happen for us. So the first is Psalm 128.1. Listen to this. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. As we look forward in our lives and as we look forward as a church, we can never get past the fear of of the Lord. The fear of the Lord isn't just this like scared of God trembling. It's a fear of the Lord is I'm going to take God seriously. What he says is true. What he says is real. I'm going to build my life on his commands and I want to do what he says. And when I don't do what he says, I don't beat myself up, but I'm going to have a short account. I'm going to confess my sin because I want to take God seriously. He means business. His ways are true. His ways are pure. His ways are right. And so blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. As a church, we want to do that. We want to be blessed so we can bless others. But that happens as we take God seriously. And the way we talk, take God seriously is what it says at the end, is you walk in his ways. And so part of what we want to do as a healthy biblical community is we want to do what God says. We want to dig into the Word every week. We want to dig into the Word in our small groups. We want to dig into the Word in our kids zone, in our student ministry, and every facet of our church. We want to dig into what God says. We want to open the Scriptures and ask Him to speak to us. And He will. And then we don't just want to know it and fill our mind with it. We want to do it. We want to walk in it. And blessing will come. So that's kind of the foundation. If you want to bless life, take God seriously. Begin to do what he says. If he says to do something, you begin to do it and see him come through. If we want to bless church, we need to take God seriously. We need to begin to do what he says and see God come through. And then notice what happens when this begins to happen. Psalm 133, 1 says, How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. A healthy biblical community with a wise organization and then healthy personal relationships. It has a unity that blesses. How good and pleasant. It's this like just, wow, that was amazing. I hope in your experience with Ridgeview Church, you've had that. Well, it just was, it was good. The conversation you had with somebody, it was good. The experience you had, it was pleasant. There's a sense of which like this well-being, like you, you feel like complete, like, wow, thank you, Lord. That was such an encouragement to me. That was exactly what I needed. And the the scripture there is just saying that there's nothing that quite compares. When God's people come together and God works in the middle of it, there's nothing that compares that. There's this goodness and pleasantness that exists built on the unity that we are doing what God has told us to do together. Romans 12, 18 talks about how we want to strive for these kinds of relationships and this kind of community and this unity. It says in verse 18, if it is possible, as far as as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. So a healthy biblical community is fearing God. Then it is unity. We want to work towards that. But then also, now we get this idea of peace. People long for peace. As we look forward this year, I don't know if there's a time where people are just longing for peace that they've not had for a long time. They're longing to just have some of the havoc and chaos in their lives that surrounds them, that chases them with their family, that chases them at work, that chases them with their bank account, that chases them with their choices, that chases them with their past, that runs them over with their future. People are just so void of peace. But God's people, the healthy biblical community that he wants at Ridgeview Church is a place that as long as it depends on us, we're gonna do all that we can to be at peace with people. And I'm going to talk through how that looks. 
And then Hebrews 13, 16 kind of summarizes the opportunity that we have. It says this, and do not forget to do good and to share with others for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So we started with the fear of the Lord. We need to focus on that. We need to take him seriously. Then we got into unity. We need to be unified. Then we talked about we need to really fight for peace. Isn't that kind of counterintuitive? Fight for peace. But it's true. And then the last is there's a sense in which we need to love and sacrifice for others. This is the framework for a healthy biblical community. It begins with the fear of God. But then as you fear him and you take him seriously, you, you realize that this is who he is. He is a God who brings peace. He is a God who brings unity. He's a God that loved. How do we know? Well, he sent his son. He's a God who sacrificed. How do we know? His son sacrificed for us. So if you begin with God and you want to start this new year, start with that. God, I want to fear you this year. I want to take you seriously. If you begin on that track this year, your life will be radically different in three months. And if you continue, it'll be radically different in six. And then at the end of 2021, you can look back and say, God, I feared you this year in ways that I never have. And you have changed my life. That's my hope and prayer for you. That's my hope and prayer for me and our entire church. So now I just want to give some practical ways that this can happen. And this is going to be the focus for us as a church this next year. I think every year it's helpful to to kind of, let's focus on some things together. So for this year, 2021, we want to focus on being a healthy biblical community. If we're a healthy biblical community, God will use us in the lives of many people. So let's dig in. What are the seven keys to a healthy biblical community? Well, if you've been around Bridgeview, I hope that this is not going to be new to you, but will kind of build on what you've already learned or heard about. And if you are new to Ridgeview, I hope this will give you a sense of what we're all about. And I want to talk about something called the Ridgeview Heart Attitudes. Now, these are not unique uh, to Ridgeview. In fact, these were put together by one of my mentors, a great help to me. His name is Harold Bullock. He's actually come out to speak at Ridgeview Church uh, in the past. He's been, uh, his church, Hope Church, has been a great support to us. They've included us in their Christmas offering. They've sent teams out to help with our grand opening, um, and they have been a great blessing to us. Well, Harold, when he started his church in 1978, He wanted to create this healthy biblical community, and he took some time to really look at the scriptures. And in the New Testament, there's these commands called one another's. And one another's are the things that we're supposed to do to one another, like we're supposed to love one another, serve one another. And he took all of these one another's, and he began to kind of organize them by theme and commands and what we're supposed to do or maybe what we're not supposed to do. And he came up with these seven keys these seven heart attitudes. If you want a healthy biblical community in your family or a healthy community at work, and especially in the church, you can't get away from these seven heart attitudes. And so for this year, as we look forward, I want us as a church in new ways to live out these heart attitudes. Now, I want to talk briefly um, about what that means, heart attitude. Again, we we use those two words, but we don't necessarily uh, talk about them together. So let's just define what that means. First is the heart. The heart are intentional decisions to want what God wants and do what God says. In culture, heart usually denotes a feeling. We do a little heart emoticon, and that kind of expresses something that we we love. Uh, we, We... Think in terms of romantic love and the heart and Cupid. We have all these pictures of this romantic feeling-infused sense of something. And that's what represents the heart. Well, actually, the heart in Scripture represents this kind of cockpit of our life. If you are on a plane and you get into the cockpit, the cockpit is what's directing where the plane goes. It's the same with our heart. It's actually this decision-making thing that happens within us. It's this thing that drives what we do. And so we want to build a healthy community that actually represents the core of us, the heart, the things that actually make an impact, the things that that will drive us. Now, the second, attitude, well, what is that? Well, an attitude is actually an angle of approach to life or to people, to events, or to situations. So the heart are these intentional decisions, but the attitudes are, okay, 
we have these intentional decisions, but we're going to do that at a cert, in a certain way. There's this angle of approach. So even if you think of the plane, and you've got a plane that's flying, and you, the cockpit's driving where it goes, well, the heart is driving it where it goes. But then the attitude is like, well, what's the degree and the angle for which that will happen? And that's really helpful to think about because we make heart attitudes and heart decisions and an angle of approach every day. And we do what makes sense to us. So as a church, we want these heart attitudes to become the thing that we choose to do. Now, as I mentioned these, we need a lot of grace. Anytime you look at commands in Scripture, it can be overwhelming. Like, I can't be that person. Because I know me when no one's looking. I know what my family's like when we close the doors. So it's easy to think like this is something that's just aspirational. And certainly, God is gracious and we need to take steps towards it. But this is the type of thing, again, when you fear God and you take him seriously and you do what he says and you wanna to commit to these things, he will transform you over time. He can transform your attitude, your angle of approach. As you dig into the scripture, maybe you're somebody that's harsh and you snap at people. Well, as God begins to show you patience and graciousness in your words, and you begin to, to learn that, and you memorize scripture, and you begin to, to choose that, what begins to happen is over time, you become less harsh. You could become less reactive. Before you know it, you've, you've changed. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can change because God is the one who is the change agent. He gives us his Holy Spirit when we decide to follow him. He lives in us, and, and we can be transformed. And so our angle of approach can change, and then also the decisions that we make. I don't know if, if you've been following Christ for long, but it's amazing how you can look back sometimes and say, wow, I was a totally different person before I became a Christian. I would have never done what I've done now. Again, maybe you're giving and you would have never given before. Maybe you're serving. You would never serve before. Even watching this online, you're thinking, I would, have never, I would just want to sleep in. But God's doing something in your life. So your heart and your attitudes can change. And as a church, if we really adopt these, and by His grace, we begin to kind of take these and own these. God will really make a difference. And so part of our membership commitment here at Ridgeview, if you want to become a member, is to actually commit to these hard attitudes. And so I want to walk through them. But it starts with this idea. I realize that often, as a part of the church, I will need to. So it's a statement. I realize for me to be a part of building this healthy biblical community, I will need to live by these attitudes. And so here's the first one. So I'm going to kind of go through each one and just briefly describe it. Now, the good news is you can't in one message adequately describe the one another's in the New Testament. You, you just can't. There's just too much. Again, there's so much that, that God's Word says that it, it's very difficult. Even in a message, even if you were to take the whole year, it's, it's not adequate. So we're actually going to be launching groups in February next month, Heart Attitude Groups. And we're going to go through a brand new book that Harold Bullock put together, the man who created these hard attitudes. And we're going to dig into these attitudes together and the scriptures together. And I think it's going to be such a great time. We're going to do online groups as well, where you can read the book and discuss it over Zoom. We're going to do in-person groups. And I think by us spending some time in this book together, like what we're learning right now will just expand. So I'm not going to take so much time, but I encourage you to join one of those heart attitude connect groups that we're going to have. So there's just a little plug for that. So I realize that often as a part of the church, I will need to, here's hard attitude number one, put the goals and interests of others above my own. This is the practical definition of love. The opposite is looking out for my own interests. It's actually very difficult to put the interests of others above your own. For instance, if somebody's trying to merge onto the freeway, isn't it sometimes easier to speed up to preserve your place than to slow down and let them in? That's just a practical, like, hard attitude. Well, I could put their goals and their interests if I actually wanted to come onto the freeway safely, safety, safely, sorry, than my goal of trying to get ahead. Somebody's maybe, you know, cuts in line. Like, they didn't put their goals, or they didn't put my goals in front of theirs, but I could put theirs in front of mine. And if... What happens if they come in front of me in the line that I've been waiting in? How do I react to that? And in church life, it's this idea that I'm going to help people with their goals, which means I need to know what their goals are. 
And certainly, these goals are just for us to have peace and, and for us to, to kind of experience success. So if we can do that to help people, we build a healthy biblical community. And then interest, like how do I look out for people instead of just myself? If you want to make an impact in your relationships, begin to start this. This is love. And it's sacrifice. The opposite is selfishness. We can't build a healthy biblical community on selfishness, but we can build it on love. And that's what it means to put the goals and interests of others above my own. So here's a challenge for you. If you're married, what are some goals and interests of your spouse that you could help them with? Are they stressed or overwhelmed? Is there something that you could look out for them and serve them? If you have kids, what are some goals and interests of your kids? I don't know about you, but I have three kids and there's oftentimes my kids are asking me to do something and it's like, not, I, I can't do that right now. Dad, can you help me with this? Or dad, watch this. Or dad, can you? And so I, I got my goal. I got to continue in this project. I need to go to this place. I need to do what I want to do. But there's just sometimes by the grace of God, God says, just, just stop. Help them. Help your son. Help your daughter with their goal. Stop what you're doing. Say, oh yeah, show me. Let me see it. You right then practice hard attitude number one. In the church, if someone's struggling and you can tell that they just need someone to talk to, instead of kind of trying to get out of that conversation, you engage and you just stop and you slow down. Well, let's talk. Tell me. Let's pray. Let me pray for you. If somebody has a need, you, you look to meet it. So I'm spending a little bit more time on this hard attitude number one because it's the, the beginning and it's the foundation like love. That's how we build a healthy biblical community is, is love. Often, I realize I'm going to need to do the second, hard attitude number two, live an honest, open life before others. So the opposite of this would be deception. This is to have integrity, to, to have truth. Like I want to live open and honest. It doesn't mean that I tell everyone everything that I've ever thought. Okay, that's, that's transparency. That, that's not always healthy. But it is, there are people within the church that I can actually be honest with my struggles. I can be open with what's really going on. We all need that. As the pastor, I need that. I need people that I can actually be true with and be, be real with the struggles that I'm facing, the things that I'm overwhelmed by, the anxieties that I have, the pressures, and you do too. So a healthy biblical community, we, we have to live open and honesty, honestly with each other. And that can make a real difference. But what's hard to number three? That is to give and receive scriptural correction. Anytime you hear correction, oh mercy, I don't know about you, but it's like the hairs on your neck stand up. Like, whoa, correction? We just don't use that. But the idea is, in life, we all have blind spots. Have you ever been doing something and just thought to yourself, why didn't somebody tell me? It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever walked and you've had maybe uh, something on your shirt or a tag or a stain and, or your collar is popped and it's messed up if you're a man. I've done that many times. And you get home and you're like, why didn't anybody say anything? Because I didn't see it. I didn't see it, but they saw it. It's the idea of life. There's things that we're doing that are blind spots we cannot see. So we give and receive scripture correction. It's the idea of like, we want to help people. If they're in a tough spot and they, they have a pattern of doing something that's destructive, we will love them enough to talk with them about it. And then they will love me enough to do the same to me, giving and receiving. Now, not personal correction, not one-time, it's scriptural, like if there's a pattern. So if you're in the Heart Attitude group, we're going to talk about that more. But that is so important because it's actually scriptural correction that prevents us from having hard hearts. You can't build a biblical community with hard hearts. So put the goals and interests of others above my own. That's Heart Attitude number one. Live an honest, open life before others. That's Heart Attitude number two. How else do we build a healthy biblical community? The third is we give and receive scriptural correction. So these three, these really impact our relationships. These make such a difference. Well, what's number four? Number four is to clear up relationships. This is the idea. When things get messed up, we're going to clean up. I don't know what kind of a family that you grew up in, but it's very easy. Uh, dysfunctional families are basically defined by there's things that are going on, but it's not talked about. Everybody knows there's a problem, but nobody addresses it. Everybody knows that there's a strain, but nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody knows there's conflict, but it's not really brought up. And so we can just live life just thinking that's normal. 
But a biblical community, we actually, if there's things that are messed up, if there's a problem between us and somebody else, we want to clear that up. We want to seek forgiveness. We want to seek to restore this relationship. Why? Because if you have a bunch of fractured, broken relationships within a church, it's not healthy. I don't know if you grew up in the church, but I experienced many times so many broken people within the church that never addressed the issues. And the churches just began to split and decay and talk about health like there was no health. Like if you don't clear up relationships, it's just like eating junk food and neglecting your health and expecting you to be healthy. It just doesn't work. You have to be willing to put the work in to, to clean up those messes, to make things right. Forgiveness and trust versus bitterness. So that's harder to number four. So those first four, those really make a difference in a healthy community in the personal relationships. The last three, these really make a difference in the organization. So remember the two key parts, a wise organization, right? And then also personal healthy relationships. So the first four are those personal healthy relationships. The last three are how do we organize and how do we like together build this structure that pleases God? Well, that's hard to number five. Participate in the ministry. What we want to focus on this year at Ridgeview Church is we want to see everyone participate in the ministry. Now, participation could look differently. Online, we want you to participate. And we're going to be thinking of new ways to help you engage online. We also want people to participate by, if they've not served yet, to to serve uh, and get an experience of helping out on a Sunday by setting up or helping out with an event that we have. We also want people to participate in the ministry by being a part of a group if they've never been a part of a group. It's the idea of just taking that next step. If I've just watched a service, how can I be in a group? And if I've watched a service and been in a group, how can I serve? And so just continue to take that. If I've, I've been just helping in the silence, how can I maybe commit and let the church know, like, I'm, I want to regularly participate? And so we want to invite you to do that. And we're going to have opportunities this year as we look forward to being this healthy community. We need people who are willing and ready to participate to be a part of what God wants to do. This is not just for me. It's not just for pastors. Like the pastors don't do it. We actually want to create and organize so that you, the people of the church, can do the ministry. That's where the fun is, the front lines. So we want to do all we can to prepare you to do the front line ministry of helping people, loving people, serving people. That's hard attitude number five. Hard attitude number six, support the work financially. Oh man, have you ever been to a church and it just seems like they just talk about money? Here at Ridgeview, we actually try to talk about money as it makes sense. And what you find is actually talking about money is is healthy. Because you can't talk about your finances and then talk about following God and those two never connect. In fact, Jesus says, where your your treasure is, there is where your heart is. Like, what you're investing in, your, your money, that's what's really important to you. And so for us to be a healthy biblical community, we need people who are willing to invest in the church, and even greater, the kingdom of God. That's the best investment you can make. It's an investment in eternity. And I just I can't wait to see the, the ways God will continue to allow us to step up as people support the work financially. But as you continue to trust God with your money and you give some of it away, you actually begin to grow. Because it's be, you know, when we begin to release our resources and open our hand and give those back to God, that's when we trust Him in new ways. And that's where health really comes because we trust God and we're willing to give up and to sacrifice. So that's hard attitude number six. And then hard attitude number seven, follow spiritual leadership within scriptural limits. For any healthy organization, you have to have leaders who live these out. So we want to put leaders in place who actually live by these hard attitudes that are faithful, that are trustworthy. But then at the same time, we have to have followers that will follow those leaders. And so all of these hard attitudes work together so that the following and the leading work together so that we can build this type of church. So as we look forward, this is the type of church that I want us to become. We live by these hard attitudes. This is the type of person that I want to be. This is the type of family that I want to have. And so as you're checking out Ridgeview and as you're coming, I encourage you, Pull in as God continues to build this healthy, biblical community. Again, I can't wait to see what God does. We're so glad that you are around. 
let's walk through some next steps that you can take. So this may be just the first time you're hearing this. It could be like a lot of information. So let's kind of take some next steps. What are some things that you can do? The first, you can make a commitment. I want to commit to these hard attitudes for 2021. I encourage everyone, just make a commitment. I may not be able to do all of them perfectly at the same time. Actually, none of us can, but I, I want to commit to these. And just, just make that stand like I'm going to commit to taking a step forward to those hard attitudes. Decide to do that today. The second, I need to focus on the following hard attitude. As I brought one up, was there one that you're like, oh, that's me. That is where I'm at. That is a struggle for me. God just does that. He kind of brings that up. He does something in your heart. Remember that, that core? It's driving you. Maybe you're added to that angle. So just write that down. I need to focus on this one. As you write that, I will pray for you this week that God will just begin to help you in that area so you can grow. Because as God grows that in you, you're going to really make a difference in your life as you bless others and as you bless the church. And the last is I want to be in a heart attitude group. These are going to launch the second week of February, and we're going to go through this book together. I think it's going to be such a great time to learn more about how we can live these out in our life and how this can be true of our church. And so just make that stand. Like right now, I want to do that. And again, we'll have some different options, whether you want to do that online or in person. But I encourage you, take that step. Be a part of what God wants to build here at Ridgeview Church. As we look forward, my prayer is that we will be this healthy biblical community that makes a difference in our cities. It makes a difference in our state. And as God wills, as it extends to the world. And my prayer is that we will please God as we do it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word that gives us the benchmarks and the earmarks of, of what to focus on. We, we need to fear you. We need to be people who are unified, who bring peace and who love and sacrifice. Thank you, God, for Harold and his wisdom as he has done the work and the study to, to put these together. And, and God, we ask that these hard attitudes will be true of our life and true of our church. I pray for these groups as they will begin to form, that you'll really give us just a sense of how we can band together to live these out. And so we thank you, God, for what you're going to do this year. God, we want to be a healthy biblical community that's organized wisely and that has healthy personal relationships. We can't do this without you. We need you. And so we ask desperately for your help. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.